Yeah, football is where we begin today on the Sports Bank Zone. For the first time in their history, English Premier League outfit Aston Villa will play Champions League football after league leaders Manchester City beat Tottenham Hotspur 2-0 on Tuesday. Yeah, let's have a look at the English Premier League table. Manchester City leading the way by two points ahead of Arsenal, 88 points to 86. Liverpool in third, Aston Villa confirming a top four finish and Tottenham at the moment in fifth position, although that's not confirmed that that is where they'll finish. Now, yesterday's defeat for Tottenham confirmed Villa's top four finish as they lead Spurs by five points as you can see there with just one match to come now following their historic qualification the prince of wales wrote on x we are champions league a historic season and an amazing achievement thanks to unai the whole squad and everyone at aston villa official can't wait for next season so says all the aston villa fans now mariah um, massive achievement for the Aston Villa team because before Unai Embry came in, yes, they had some talent, they had some quality, but what they've been able to do under Unai Embry this season, I think has surprised a lot of people and I'm pretty sure maybe even Aston Villa fans. Yeah, and I think it speaks a lot to their coach Unai Emery. I think in this Aston Villa setup, the squad You've seen a lot of togetherness. You've seen the team willing to, of course, come out and fight. And we, I feel like for quite some time, the Aston Villa team, you have not seen that. But under coach Unai Emery, and that's why they always say a lot of credit really goes down to the, to, to the coach as well as um, a lot of criticism. Because, of course, when the team does bad, for example, in Manchester United's um, case, a lot of pressure is on Eric Ten Hag. But we, we really have to, you know, give a lot of consideration to Unai Emery. And for me, I think he makes the players better. And that's so, so important. And, of course, the, the number that they finished the season, which is in the top four position, speaks a lot. And I know we're going to hear from players themselves, Ricardo, as we continue this segment, talking about what he has been able to help them achieve personally and then, of course, by extension as a team. So I think congratulations to Aston Villa because it has been a tough season. They have also dealt with injuries just like other teams, but they've been able to keep their heads over water. Yeah, and you know, speaking about players who have benefited from Unai Emery and his experience, his quality as a coach, his know-how is the Jamaican Leon Bailey. Mm -hmm. Ten yeah. goals this season, nine assists uh, to his credit as well. Um, it, it's just been a completely different campaign and, and we'll hear um, Leon Bailey speak about Unai Emery yeah. in a little while um, in terms of what the coach has done for him and has done for his game which is significant and yeah. a lot of times you know I don't think people understand the importance of a coaching as we have a look at what Leon Bailey is saying Unai has given me that confidence again when Dean left it was like okay I came for this person and now they are gone. Then another coach came in and it was just like the relationship wasn't really there for me. I wasn't feeling confident yeah, and had no comfort. We wouldn't have chats to let me feel like I was needed here. When, when I came in, he gave me that feeling of confidence and comfort, the trust, everything. That's when it changed for me. At one point, I was not happy at all and I wanted to leave. But when Unai came in, everything changed. He has given everything I need and he is the best manager I have worked with. And I think he will be the best manager that I will work with for a long time. I respect him so much that if I don't start a game, it doesn't matter. I have that much trust in him and I believe in everything he is doing for the team. He has helped me a lot to really get people to see again what I am able to do. He is very important for us. What he has created has been truly remarkable. He's a really good example of a manager to have and the players really yeah. like him. So nice. the sentiments of Leon Bailey on what Unai Emery has done, and I'm pretty sure there are several other players in this Aston Villa setup that share similar sentiments. Yeah, this is a perfect example, Ricardo, of exactly what I was trying to say. Unai Emery, of course, improving individual players, and not just individually, but of course as a collective, and of course the results are proof 
as to the complete improvement of this squad. And I think Unai Emery is a coach that they would want to keep for some time. Yeah, very much the case. Uh, Simon Evans, um, our inter one of our international correspondents, joins us now on the Sports Magazine. And Simon, as usual, it is a pleasure to have you. How are you doing this afternoon? Simon. <laughs> mm. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was starting to wonder if Simon was a Tottenham <laughs> fan and uh, still disappointed at finishing outside the top four and being involved in Champions League football next season. No, 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 not at all. But it, it was, uh, you know, it's, it's a very strange uh, the, the way that people at Tottenham have reacted to that situation. I think I can understand why they, they didn't want, fans didn't want Arsenal to win, but... Um, it does seem to have sort of taken over, taken on life, it's done that whole silliness, hasn't it, really, with the response of uh, Foster Coglu afterwards saying the foundations are, are weak at the club and so on. It's, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate situation for Tottenham, really. Yeah, very much an unfortunate situation for Tottenham. Not the case, though, for Aston Villa. This is a wonderful moment in their football history. Last played the Premier Competition in Europe in 1982-83. This is the first time that they'll get the opportunity to play the UEFA Champions League, as it is now called, as opposed to the European Cup, which is what it was called in 1983. And it is a significant achievement, uh, Simon, and especially given what Unai Emery has been able to do with this team this season. Yeah, it's not so long ago. Go back to when uh, Steven Gerrard was uh, at, at the team, in charge of the team, and uh, they were struggling. They were they were they were down at the bottom end of the table. Go back a few years before that, and it's not so long ago since, uh, in relative terms, since Villa were actually in the championship in the second tier. So you know, it's it, it's been a long time since they've been in that European League competition. As you say, going back to the early eighties when they actually won the old European Cup. Um, so. But really, within the space of a couple of years, what Embry has been able to do is uh, is quite extraordinary, really. And I am a little bit surprised. I'm glad, in a way, but I'm a little bit surprised that he isn't being linked or talked about with some of the, the jobs that might be coming up this uh, summer. You know, the, the, what he's done there, what he's done before in Spain, uh, in his, his a couple of really good spells there with uh, Villarreal. So, yeah, he, he's, uh, you know, I think he was... His reputation would be damaged a little bit by his spell at Arsenal, but apart from that, take that out of the picture, uh, his record as a coach is incredible. Yeah, and just one more, because we were talking about Leon Bailey earlier, and Leon has spoken about um, how Unai Emery has helped his game this campaign. But another player who I think has been excellent for Aston Villa, um, Ollie Watkins, 19 goals, 13 assists. And he just can't stop producing for this Villa team. He's had an excellent season as well, Simon. He has. His season might not be over. He's, he's got a good chance of making Paris Southgate's uh, squad for the Euros, I yeah. think, for the, the summer. I think if, if uh, Southgate has to pick one striker as backup to the central striker to Harry Kane, then I think Watkins is in a really strong position to, to take that spot. Um, and he's such a smooth player, isn't he? You know, he he, he gets into the little channels uh, and he moves, but he's 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 not a fussy or uncomplicated player. He just does everything in a very smooth way. But again, Emery showing his quality as a manager has been able to really bring the best out of him. Yeah, and you know, we spoke about Leon Bailey before you joined us at length. Ricardo asked you, of, you know, he mentioned his name as well. But Simon, as a Jamaican player and of course a Caribbean player by extension, because you know. Once one of our um, Caribbean teams are playing, everybody, of course, supports. How do you feel Leon Bailey went about his entire season once he got under the leadership of Unai Emery? Yeah, I feel he's a player who needs to know that the coach is 100% behind him. Yeah, 100% believes in him. And I think he's picked that up. I think before that, maybe he was always a little bit in the back of his mind, he was in the team one week, he was substituted the next week as well. I think even if it would have been, been games when Emery hasn't stopped him, um, I think he has that belief there, that this this is somebody who really trusts him and wants to bring the, bring the bet out of him. And uh, I think we've started to see a level of consistency from Leon Bailey that, that, that was what was missing from his game, really. Right, and now that Aston Villa has, of course, secured that Champions League spot, we know Champions League is not 
um, one of those competitions that you can get by easily. It's top class competition, you know, full of quality. Do you think this Aston Villa team has what it takes to really put up a competitive fight? Or do you see Onai Embry and, of course, the owners of the club having to do a lot of transfer business? I don't think they do need to do a lot of transfer business. No, and I think they, they, will, they will add, I'm sure, make some additions. But if you look at what Henry did with the, the clubs he worked with in Spain, particularly at Villarreal most recently, um, he went into those competitions in Europe. Okay, it was the Europa League mostly, but he went into those competitions with a team that on paper people looked at and said they shouldn't be challenging, and they did. They went and had deep runs in those competitions. And, and he must have to navigate and negotiate. I would say that that is his natural environment more than the Premier League. There was maybe a question over Emery's ability in the Premier League, but his ability in, in European competition is, is undoubted. And I don't think they do need to go making big, big changes now. Just build on what they've got. They've got a good thing going at Aston Villa. And I think just bringing in one or two players, strengthening a few options behind that, uh, rather than any sort of wholesale, oh, we're in Europe now, we have to strengthen everywhere, and, and you can throw out the baby with the bathwater if you're not careful about that. Yeah. And, well, we're still at the top end of the EPL table, Simon, and Manchester City are on course for a record-breaking four EPL titles in a row as they hold a two-point advantage over Arsenal with only one round of matches to come. So, Simon... Are Manchester City favourites for a fourth EPL title in a row? Well, judging the way they celebrated uh, after that win at Tom Osper, I think they think they're favourites for sure. Um, and I think they are, you know. Um, but I do think uh, people need to just show a little bit more respect to West Ham United. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's yes, absolutely, Manchester City are, are favourites. They should win that game. Yeah. But it's not all over. They're not playing a relegated team or something. Uh, so City going to have to work out, you know, and, and Dave Moyes uh, is probably on his way out of West Ham United, but he's, he's a canny manager, and, and you should show respect. And I hope Guardiola uh, transmits, I'm sure he will, to his players uh, before Sunday. But, yeah, you would, you would expect uh, City to take care of business. And uh, Arsenal's game is against Everton, isn't it? Um, that's no easy game either. But uh, you would also expect Arsenal to, 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 to come out on top in that one as well. So if, if both teams win their final game, then Manchester City have that uh, fourth Premier League title in a row. Yeah, Simon, do you remember that 2011-2012 season when it was between Manchester United and Manchester City and Manchester United felt as if it was done and dusted and then the man who got the name Kun Aguero of course, steal the city's first title. I do remember that against Queen's Park Rangers on the final day of the season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so th this kind of give me, gives me that type of vibe. So, you know, even as a Manchester City fan, and I'm very confident, I feel like I don't want to start celebrating like Manchester United did and then end up being really sad about it after. So I think Manchester, Manchester City and Pep would want to go about their business a bit different. Yeah, I did that, that reaction after the Tottenham game, but I just thought, oh, they're, they're really celebrating this win, and there's one game to go, and it, you could... But then again, you know, you sit back up and you think, you know, they are professionals, and, and I'm happy they know the significance of that win. They're not celebrating the title. They'll go away, go on the other and make sure that they're mentally prepared. But it is a tricky one. It is a tricky one, and it has to be done. And there will be, as it gets near the of the Sunday, there will be a few butterflies coming in. And uh, I think also, you know, people in England are starting to complain a little bit that it's uh, becoming monotonous, City winning all the time. They might sense a little bit of that mood as well, that, that, that maybe the sort of broader public in England would quite like to see, see them stumble. So they really have to have their, uh, their heads on and be mentally strong on Sunday. Yeah, well, Simon, it promises to be a super Sunday when Manchester City and Arsenal um, battle for the EPL title. City very much in control, and they have been brilliant. And we know from um, the recent history that when City find themselves in this position, it's hard, almost impossible to wrestle the title away from them. And there are not many betting against City doing what they need to do against West Ham. But I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about it, Simon, um, come next week, Monday. So until then, take care. We'll chat. All right, all the best.
Simon Evans talking English Premier League football. By the way, two matches played today. Chelsea getting a win by two goals to one over Brighton. And can you believe it? A victory for Manchester United as well. Yeah, over Newcastle by three goals to two. Manchester United has been on the losing end of so many five-goal games this season, but today belonged very much to them. We'll be back with more on the Sports Max Zone.